What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today, basically, I'm going to be giving you guys an update on my career journey and sharing with you my career backup plan if CBSA does not work out. So no way for this is me saying I'm giving up on CBSA because that's my top choice. That is what I'm working on right now and I'm really excited to get things rolling once again. As you guys know, this past year, I took the CBSA entrance exam for the first time, I did not pass, and I get to take it in March this year. So I'm really hopeful that I pass, but I have come to realize, talking to other people that have went through the program, some that were successful, some that were not, even if you pass the entrance exam, you have to complete everything else in the selection process. If you fail one thing, you basically start over, which is going to be almost like a slap to the face to me. But because I'm so young, even if I were to fail or fail anything in the selection process, whenever it comes time this year to do it, I'm not giving up. I'm still going to be working towards CBSA because ultimately that is what I want to do as a career, like I mentioned on this channel before. So I'm never going to be giving up on my dream to become a CBSA agent, but it is definitely something that I honestly feel like I should have almost like a backup plan, something else to do in the meantime before I can actually make CBSA a reality. So I've been talking to different people. Some people say that they give up on the selection process and before things start rolling, before you even hit training. And that's why CBSA now are really picky on who they select to become a CBSA agent and get into the training because they know a lot of people back out and CBSA pays for everything, and CBSA pays a lot even while you're in training, not whenever you're on campus, even though the food, your training, everything is free, and they do give you a allowance of, I think it's 125, maybe 150 a week, which isn't much for you, but they are paying that themselves, so that makes sense why they're extremely picky on who they select to take this training because a lot of people do back out. They want to make sure they're trying their best to pick people that are not only going to go through the training, complete the training, but also become a successful CBS agent and stay with them. So that makes sense there, why people back out and why it's so hard to get into CBSA. On top of that, I talk to a lot of people that say most people back out once they hit the campus, not, because, not necessarily because it is hard at the campus, but because it is a financial hit. They're only giving you an allowance of 125 or 150 like I said, and if you're not financially set to take that decrease, uh, it's way less than what you'd make at a full-time job, then it will be harder for you to stay at the campus, and a lot of people end up backing out because they cannot take that financial hit, at least not at that time. For me, I'm okay with that financial hit. I've saved a lot of money. I've always been saving money. I've always had the mindset of saving money. So whenever it comes time for me to become a CBSA agent, I'm going to have money set aside to basically live in the meantime. But all your food is paid for apparently at campus. All your training is paid for. You live there. So everything is covered. Your electricity and everything's covered. So it shouldn't be too much of a hit for me at least. So that's not a huge factor. But again, there is a lot to do to become a CBSA agent. And that's why they make it really hard because they know a lot of people back out and they want to try their best to pick ones that and pick the people that are going to hopefully stay and not back out. So it is something that I'm definitely not giving up. I am young. So, for example, if I end up failing the entrance exam again this year, I have a full time job right now. I'm doing pretty good at it. I'm going to likely stay here or look for one of my backup plans and try to start one of them while I'm waiting to take the entrance exam again. Or if I pass the entrance exam and fail something in the selection process, I'm not giving up. I know I'm just going to try again in the future. I know of people now that are over the age of 30 that are trying to get into CBSA and having a hard time. So with me being 23, almost 24, even though I'd love to get into CBSA right now, if that doesn't happen for a couple more years, I'm okay with, but I'm definitely not giving up on my dream to become a CBSA agent. So now for a couple of my backup plans, if CBSA does not work out this year, what I'm going to be trying to do, number one is going to be continuing where I am working now. I work nights at a casino doing security. The money has been getting good. I've been getting full-time hours. I do work nights. 
I honestly love where I work. I love my coworkers. I love what I do, which is something if you asked me a year and a half ago or almost two years ago now, whenever I worked retail, I would be saying the complete opposite. So the fact that I'm getting into security and I'm gaining the experience, I love what I do now. I'm honestly enjoying life. So if CBSA, if I does not, if so for CBSA, if it doesn't work out this year when I take the entrance exam or if I pass and if I fail anything along the way in that process, I'm not giving up, but I will likely stay working at my job, at least for now, until something else and another opportunity comes up. But I love getting the experience. I love doing what I do. The money's okay. Why not stay? But there is a couple other things that are interesting me. Number one, I have a coworker that used to work at Brinks. He doesn't work where I work anymore. He went back home. He didn't live in Canada or he's not from Canada. So he used to work Brinks and he told me that it's about 35 to almost $40 an hour. The schedule is very flexible. You basically tell them what you want to work and they will tell you what's available and what your shifts are. So that to me is awesome. Um, it's not too hard to have all the requirements. I have my restricted and unrestricted gun licenses. I've been gaining experiences in security where I currently work. So it shouldn't be too hard to get hopefully hired on if they were, if that is something that interests me and it is something that I apply for. And I honestly think I would enjoy it. Um, and I honestly wouldn't mind working at Brinks. And it is something with the schedule. It means working at Brinks, I hopefully won't be doing nights. I'd uh, be working mostly days. The schedule would be flexible. The money would be amazing. Um, making almost $40 an hour. I wouldn't mind doing that at all. Getting holidays off would be also a bonus. And be something nice and interesting to do in the meantime while I wait for CBSA. And the other thing would be a government job, a government security job, which they're always hiring. And I know a lot of my coworkers are currently looking into that and seeing what's available because where I work, it's not something if you're coming into it now that it's going to be long term. Most people are two to five years and then they move on. That's how long they work there, two to five years. If you started off early, whenever the company started at this location, you would be basically, there's some that are hitting their 20 year mark this year. So they've been there for a long time. Their pension's really good. But for somebody coming into it now, working where I work, two to five years is the average that people stay nowadays. So that's why I have to consider all other options. And I know a lot of my coworkers are considering government security jobs. So I've been looking into it, seeing what's available. And it is something that interests me. Brinks, on the other hand, Compared to how far I have to drive to work now, it wouldn't be too much farther. So that's why that's something that interests me. But the government jobs, I'm going to have to see what is available, what the job is, where it's located, what the pay is, what the hours are like, and see what's available from there. But definitely Brinks is something that interests me. That's something that I could see realistically me doing. And also me staying at my current job for a little bit longer, hopefully until I get into CBSA, but if that doesn't happen for a few more years, I'm gonna to have to consider one of my other backup plans. So this is basically, I just wanted to give you guys an update on my career journey because it's almost time for me to take the entrance exam. And over the past few weeks, I've been thinking of what will happen if I do not pass the entrance exam or what will happen if I fail anything along the way right after the entrance exam, what am I going to do? So I wanted to make this video updating it for you guys because I've been thinking about it for weeks and I wanted to give you guys basically an update of what I plan on doing if I do not pass this year for CBSA. So staying at my current job, that's the first thing I'm going to be doing. And then I might be looking for another job, which I'm hopefully going to be applying for Brinks if that does happen. And if I do have to look for another job, just more money. That's the main reason why I would because I honestly love where I'm working, I love what I'm doing, and I love working with my coworkers. But more money was, is definitely something that interests me. And then potentially a government job if everything works with my schedule, with the money, with where I'm gonna be working. So I always have to keep my options available. And I'm learning that now as I'm getting more into getting ready for CBSA, that there's potentially, it might not be for me, CBSA might not be for me, but that doesn't mean I have to give up now and look at other options. 
It's just I have to realistically realize that I have to make sure that I know now there's other options available if CBSA does not work out. Because if I just focus all my attention on CBSA and if CBSA does not work out, then I'm going to be stuck at square one trying to decide and think, what should I do now? So if I start planning that now, at least I'll have my mindset and kind of know the direction that I want to take if that does happen in the future. So hope you guys did enjoy this quick little update. I know it's longer than I wanted it to be, but I'm going to leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.